Ladies and gentlemen, you may be seated. The Honorable Philip Peer, Prime Minister of St. Lucia. Mr. Justice Ivor Archie, the Honorable Chief Justice of Trinidad and Tobago. Mr. Robert Bermudez, Chancellor. The Honorable Bridget Anisette George, Speaker of the House of Representatives. The Honorable Claudius Francis, Speaker of the House of Assembly, St. Lucia. Professor Sir Hilary Beckles, Vice-Chancellor. The Honorable Reginald Amor, Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs. Dr. The Honorable Nan Gadsby Dolly, Minister of Education. Senator Dr. The Honorable Amiri Brown, Minister of Foreign and CARICOM Affairs. The Honorable Fitzgerald Hines, Minister of National Security. The Honorable Penelope Beckles Robinson, Minister of Planning and Development. Senator the Honorable Renuka Sam Gransing Sukal, Minister in the Office of the Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs. The Honorable Lisa Morris Julian, Minister in the Ministry of Education. The Honorable Kamla Prasad Besesa, Leader of the Opposition. Professor Rosemary Bellantuan, our inductee, Pro Vice Chancellor and Campus Principal, St. Augustine Campus, and Dr. the Honorable Kenny Anthony, former Prime Minister, St. Lucia. Your Excellencies, Heads of Missions and other members of the Diplomatic Corps, the Honorable Madame Justice Rajnuth Lee, Caribbean Court of Justice, the Honorable Justice Winston Anderson, Caribbean Court of Justice, the Honorable Donna Prol Raphael, Chairman, Equal Opportunity Tribunal, the Honorable Madame Justice Maria Wilson, the Honorable Justice Carl Singh, the Honorable Esmond Ford, Deputy Speaker of the House of Representatives. The Honorable Maxi Kufi. The Honorable Mr. Anthony Garcia. The Honorable Ms. Khadija Amin, Members of Parliament. Senator the Honorable Paul Richards. Senator the Honorable Sophia Cote. Senator the Honorable Varma Delian Singh, Members of the Senate. The Most Honorable P.J. Patterson, former Prime Minister, Jamaica, and a Statesman in Residence. The Honorable Sabota Caesar, Minister of Agriculture, Forestry, Fisheries, Rural Transformation, Industry and Labor, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Ms. Sharon Christopher, Chair, Campus Council. Professor Denzel Williams, Pro Vice Chancellor and Campus Principal, the Five Islands Campus. Professor Winston Moore, Deputy Campus Principal, Cave Hill Campus. Professor Ian Boxhill, Deputy Campus Principal, the Mona Campus. Dr. Emily Dick Ford, Deputy Campus Principal of the Open Campus. Professor Indar Ramnarine, Deputy Campus Principal of St. Augustine Campus. Ms. Sandra Maynard, Pro Vice Chancellor, Global Affairs. Dr. Dawn Marie DeForgill, Campus Registrar. Ms. Andrea Taylor Hanna, Campus Bursa. Chief Ricardo Brath, Chief First Peoples. Ms. Lenore Baptist Simons, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Education. Distinguished speakers, deans and other members of senior management and the staff of the UWI St. Augustine campus, recipients of honor degrees, members of the private and public sectors, members of the media and our specially invited guests, members of the alumni, ladies and gentlemen, all. A very good evening to everyone, including those who are joining us virtually on UETV, GIS in St. Lucia, and TTT online. I know our live stream is connecting many all across the world to us here at the Daga Auditorium located at the St. Augustine campus in Trinidad and Tobago. My name is Maurice Smith and I'm the University Registrar and it is my distinct pleasure to welcome you to this formal academic ceremony where the Chancellor of the University of the West Indies will formally induct the Pro Vice Chancellor and Principal of the St. Augustine campus. I wish to ask you, our live audience, to kindly silence or turn off your mobile phones. To our colleagues in the media, you are kindly asked to avoid crossing the front of the stage at any time during the ceremony as we are live on television. As COVID-19 is still a threat, I encourage everyone to continue to follow the necessary safety guidelines such as sanitizing and mask wearing where possible. Thank you so very much. For your cooperation. 
Professor Rosemarie Bellantoine will this evening join a distinguished group of leaders who, since 1960, have skillfully steered the ship at this our second oldest campus. Together, they have shaped the culture of growth and innovation. Together, they have shaped the culture of growth and innovation that is imbued into the St. Augustine campus. She will follow in the footsteps of former principals Sir Philip Sherlock, Sir Dudley Huggins, Professor Lloyd Brathwaite, George Maxwell Richards, Professor Compton Bourne, Dr. Bourgeondat Tawari, Professor Bridget Burton, Professor Clement Sankat, and Professor Brian Copeland. You will agree that Professor Antoine has a sound legacy on which to build. At this induction ceremony, we will formally recognize new leadership and direction and the turning of yet another chapter at the St. Augustine campus under the principalship of Principal Antoine. We will witness the new principal's formal endowment of the responsibilities of her appointment, and we look forward to her inaugural address as she shares her outlook for the St. Augustine campus. We are indeed proud to honor this UWI alumna turned Caribbean leader the first of the law fraternity to rise to the ranks of pro vice chancellor and now to campus principal at this institution. She is ever a history maker and modern day freedom fighter whose work has been transformational and lauded regionally and internationally. It is appropriate therefore that Principal Antoine chose as her theme for this induction ceremony, together we can create the change. She is the original change maker. Many of our speakers this evening, including former Prime Minister of Jamaica, P.J. Patterson, will give you glimpses into the various facets of Principal Antoine's impressive work and sterling service, her ethos and her life, underscoring her influence and impact across the diverse society as a pioneering Caribbean jurist, a commissioner, a consultant, cannabis and international financial law expert, change agent, and all-around creature creative lover of nature. Mindful of my responsibility to manage our time as efficiently as possible, I will not offer an official citation, but I'll invite you to read the biographical profile presented in your program. You would also wish to view the exhibition located at the site of the reception that follows at the University Inn and Conference Center. I'm honored to serve as your chair for this academic, formal academic ceremony, and I now call on the Vice Chancellor, Professor Sir Hilary Beckers, to deliver remarks. <laughs> Chancellor, I'm sure you would allow me to recognize the protocol. But to offer special respect by way of recognition to Prime Minister Peer of St. Lucia, our former Prime Ministers P.J. Patterson of Jamaica and Kenny Anthony of St. Lucia, also to recognize all distinguished members of government and the leader of the opposition, to recognize also former principals of this campus Principal Barryton, Principal Botawari, Principal Sankat, and Principal Bourne. And to recognize our inductee and our family, members of the diplomatic corps, all of my distinguished colleagues, and ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening. We are gloriously gathered this evening to celebrate a distinguished daughter of the soil and to, and to elevate her to the highest office in higher education in the Republic. It is a magnificent moment come in as it does at the end of the 60th anniversary of the nation. It also falls at the beginning of the 75th anniversary 
of our beloved University of the West Indies. And it is a critical part of the marking of 75 years of service to our people. 75 years in which we sought to detach and liberate them from the colonial scaffold and to launch the nation building enterprise. As we rise to install Professor Rosemary Bellantoine this evening, I am happy to report that this 75th year finds us with heads held high with dignity in the satisfaction of our achievements. We prepared with passion for this moment. We prepared to have our university ranked alongside the best 30,000 universities in the world. And yes, we are ranked as the number one university in the entire Caribbean region, in the top 1% of all universities in Latin America and the Caribbean, and in the top 1.5% of the best universities in the world. We are an elite university in every sense. But we are not an elitist university. We are rooted in our civilization. We are ready for service. We have proven our resilience. And we are rising in the echelons of the finest academies in the world. We have emerged from the COVID-19 pandemic stronger, more focused, and more future forged. We never closed our doors upon our students. We stood with them, took them through an online learning revolution, and celebrated their graduation with their families. We are a stronger, more ethical institution as a result of it. Our new principal joins the management team at a moment of strategic plan and triumph, yet at a time when we are facing our greatest challenges. We are challenged to contribute to the next systemic transformation of the Caribbean economy, to diffuse digital technology and infuse digital, digital thinking throughout our ecosystems, to innovate new economic activity and to generate new economic sectors, to energize traditional economic sectors and to build out a post-colonial, globally competitive region. This campus must situate itself at the center of this effort to innovate the 21st century diversified knowledge-driven economy and society. In recent months, there have been critical internal developments within the university that will assist in driving this process. How pleased we were when the governments of Jamaica, Barbados, Antigua and Barbuda agreed to vest the lands on which we operate from leasehold to freehold so as to facilitate private public entrepreneurial activity. Just four days ago, we joined with Prime Minister Brown in Antigua and Barbuda to secure a loan from the Saudi Development Fund of 80 million US dollars to build out the Five Islands campus into a state-of-the-art academy. And just two months ago, the University Council approved the rebranding of the open campus to the global campus and to establish a company to begin the global for-profit marketing of Caribbean knowledge to the world. In this vein, Professor Antoine is keen and ready to work with the government of Trinidad and Tobago 
to bring into reality the Coover de Bay Medical Corridor, the, internal, the International Medical School Complex, which will serve as a driver in the science and technology economic sector. And here we are, live on UVTV, to the entire Caribbean, to the world, the affairs of this university. We are the only university in the world that has a 24-7 cable TV system to serve its entire region. This is, this is of revolutionary significance. Professor Antoine has demonstrated a record of distinguished leadership and development expertise. I have witnessed the evolution of her skill sets and her consciousness. I have admired her tenacity, her sharp intellect, and deep commitment to our people, in particular, those who have been marginalized and rendered especially vulnerable. She has won the confidence and trust of her colleagues, and we have placed this challenge before her consciousness. She's well prepared and is ready to get on with it. She joins a team that has had no doubt, that has had no despair, that has experienced no diminished nature of self-confidence. She will be a critical part of the team going forward, and we have no doubt that she will strengthen this team and see to it that we continue to be rooted, ready, and rising. I wish for her all the very best. We expect of her all of her very best. And as we say in Jamaica, Professor Antoine, big up, enough respect. Thank you, Vice Chancellor. Prime Minister Peer, welcome. We now pause to enjoy a musical presentation. Natalia Dopwell is one of the leading operatic performers in Trinidad and Tobago, known for her performing abilities, as well as her mentorship of younger singers through the Piclopat, Piclopat Music Development Foundation. Along with the UWI Arts Chorale, she performs The Lord is My Light by Jamaican composer Noel Dexter. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together.
shall hide me For in the time of trouble he shall hide me He shall hide me He shall hide me He shall set my feet upon a rock He shall set my feet Ormond certainly deserves another round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. I now call on representatives of campus stakeholder groups to bring greetings. They will do so in the order in which they appear in the program. Mr. Kobe Sandy, president of the Guild of Students, will be followed by Mr. Sheridan Woodruff, President of the Alumni Association, and Dr. Indira Rampasad, President of the West Indies Group of University Teachers. We will then hear from Professor Prakash Prasad, President of the University of Trinidad and Tobago, and then Vice Chancellor of the University of the Guyana, Professor Paloma Mohamed Martin. Mr. Sandy, please take the mode podium while our other speakers stand by to closely follow. Prime Minister of St. Lucia, the Honorable Chief Justice of Trinidad and Tobago, the Chancellor, the Vice-Chancellor, Government Ministers, the Leader of the, of the Opposition, our inductee, heads of missions and other members of the Corps, esteemed judges, ladies and gentlemen. It is indeed a pleasure to bring remarks on behalf of the student body to our rose of the UV. And I wish to very briefly just remind colleagues that the rose represents love. It represents courage. It symbolizes care. And during the time of uh, Professor Antoine's uh, deanship in the law faculty, we have seen that the law students would have felt the effects of a rose during that period. <laughs> one, example, one example would have been the piloting of the Macandal Laga Scholarship, which of course the Guild of Students is happy to support. 
and collaborate with. And today we see Mr. Kareem Marcel. Could you let us wave your hand, Kareem? Yes. The first recipient under that scholarship, which represents the, the fortitude and, of course, the support of uh, the goodly professor. I would say, Professor Antoine, that you ought to connect with your colleagues who are here today, your predecessors. And I can, I'm very sure they will, they will tell you of their interactions with the, with the Guild of Students and, of course, a Guild president in their time. Indeed, it is a rite of passage to be head to head with the Guild as principal. <laughs> and I do hope that you, 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 you will, of course, manage that well when the time comes. <laughs> I wish to, of course, just wish the new principal all the best in her journey. Of course, with leadership, heavy is the head that wears the crown. And we know that Professor Antoine will wear that crown in style and with dignity. And the Guild is prepared to support and to, of course, continue to represent our interests with your leadership. And as presidents come after me, I know they will, of course, continue in that vein. It is with that regard I say, all the best to you, Principal, and we will continue to work together to create that change. I thank you. Pelican evening to everyone. Prime Minister of St. Lucia, the Honorable Chief Justice of Trinidad and Tobago, Chancellor, Vice Chancellor, Ministers of Government, Leader of the Opposition, our inductee, Heads of Missions and other members of the Diplomatic Corps, esteemed judges, ladies and gentlemen. It is with Pelican pride I bring greetings from the Alumni Association Trinidad and Tobago chapter, especially the over 80,000 graduates from St. Augustine campus. As we offer congratulation and best wishes to Professor Anne Marie Bell Antoin on her appointment as principal and vice chancellor at the St. Augustine campus. Principal, we have followed your journey at UWI and are convinced that your vision and action over the years have prepared you and therefore timely for making a difference in the transformation required on the campus and by extension, the university. We not only celebrate your appointment, but wish to join in this transformation as alums. We are looking forward to having our first formal meeting with you soon. The alumni body will examine new ways that we can reach students, especially since from September this year, the annual contribution of 10 US dollars will begin towards their membership in the association for a period of three years. We shall seek to enhance the mentorship program for second year students, which this year we celebrate 31 years of service, and to actively participate in the world of work program that was proudly started by the alumni body. We further recognize the role that we must continue to play as alums for Caribbean development and leadership. We are aware, Principal, of your passion for social justice, which we will support. Let me conclude by wishing you, Professor Anton, a very successful tenure in office and the association's pledge to be part of that success. UWE alumni, Trinidad and Tobago chapter, therefore offer our diversity of knowledge, skills, and experience 
in moving forward. Ladies and gentlemen, as we say, UWI, first in our hearts and first in the region. I thank you. Prime Minister of St. Lucia, the Honorable Chief Justice of Trinidad and Tobago, Chancellor, Vice-Chancellor, Ministers of Government, Leader of the Opposition, our inductee, Heads of Missions and other members of the Diplomatic Corps, esteemed judges, ladies and gentlemen, permit me to salute as well my comrade, Professor Paul Brown, and Dr. Ian Marshall, President of Wigot Jamaica and Wigot Barbados, respectively. Ms. Gabriella Russo, President of the Oilfield Workers Trade Union, UWE Branch. Constable Matthew Greenwich, Branch Board President of the Estate Police Association. Other trade union comrades, other members of the Academic Senior Administrative and Professional Staff, ATSS and Estate Police. I have been asked to bring greetings on behalf of all the trade unions across the UEverse. My presentation is entitled A Rose and Its Petals. Kobe Sandy was my student. <laughs> I may be following in his footsteps. A great privilege, I say, to speak to you today. An auspicious year, one we would hold. 75 years ago, in 1948, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights was adopted by the United Nations General Assembly. And 75 years ago, in 1948, our beloved Yui was born at the Mona campus. Fortuitous too, the Emancipation Day appointment of our principal inductee in, on August 1st, 2022. Principal inductee, hearty congratulations on behalf of the, UN, the unions throughout the universe. You have broken the glass ceiling to become the first female principal of the St. Augustine campus. <laughs> you and our vice chancellor have been at the forefront of the 75 years of struggle and fights. And you are both keenly aware that workers' rights are human rights. For you are a rose of vibrant shades and intricate blossoms. The rose, a symbol of hope. This hope, however, should not be the opium of the masses, but a quest for real and meaningful change. It was Shakespeare who said, of all flowers, methinks a rose is best. We can complain, for rose bushes have thorns, <laughs> or we can rejoice, cause thorn bushes have rose. Principal inductee of the St. Augustine campus, as past president, commissioner of the Inter-American Court of Human Rights, foremost expert in labor law in the region, a member of the Trinidad and Tobago Industrial Relations Advisory Committee, with a deep commitment to human rights, a freedom fighter, you understand better than most why our expectations are so high. On Monday, this week, the United States celebrated with its annual national holiday the achievements of the great Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., eternal advocate for racial equality and justice, reminding us of his historic speech 
I have a dream. Like him, our unions will never stay silent about things that matter. For the unions of the Uiverse also have a dream. Our dream is not a useless foray into the past, but a progressive plan for the future. We only ask for our just dues. In our dream, you ensured that our workers got a remit and a well-deserved whooping salary increase, <laughs> outstanding for almost 10 years now, since 2014. In our dream, you ensured that management and staff work harmoni harmoniously together. In our dream, you insisted that promotion be afforded to, do to those deserving. In our dream, the UE soared even higher in global rankings to become the one, number one university in the world. In our dream, you took it upon yourself to educate those who brand our struggles for justice strident, dub our passion as rancor, and for, fail to comprehend that we cannot remain silent in the face of injustice. They just don't understand. It is imperative that you be part of this transformative paradigm. So in our dreams, you join the unions in our collective quest for justice. In this vein, we now invite you to become involved in our union's movement for change, transcending the Rubicon in a historic quest to bridge the traditional divide between union and management as we continue our tireless struggle for better wages and improve working conditions for UE employees. We cannot help but remind you of that historic day on March 21st, 2001, when you joined the student protest at Cave Hill Barbados for improved campus security and was arrested by the police. <laughs> now, it is the union stone. Welcome. Be part of our collective action. Join in our protest too. The rose arose. The union, its petals. Dear Principal and Doctor, the unions can be your beautiful petals. Or we can be the sharp prickly thorns at your side. The choice is yours. The experience will not always be a bed of roses. <laughs> Note well, though, that a rose is not a rose without its petals. Should the petals, petals wilt, the, ro the rose will droop, and those tiny, spiny thorns will thrive. However, the unions would like the beauty and fragrance of the rose to radiate throughout the universe we want the rose to bloom while its petals dance joyfully in the wind. As a member of We Got Yourself in good financial standing, <laughs> we ask that you accept a humble gift. This is not a bribe, <laughs> no sweetheart deal. It's a union's polo shirt, protest red, as you join in solidarity, in collective action, as we continue the struggle for, work, for workers' rights, our human rights, we are ready and rising. I thank you. Congratulations and best wishes. May you have a successful and productive tenure. So may I now present to you this we got polo, so you would be in uniform with us as one of our treasured members. Thank you.
after such a fiery union speech, I will take the tempo down. <laughs> Distinguished members of this August Assembly, good evening, buenas noches, namaste. On behalf of my colleagues at the tertiary level institutions of Trinidad and Tobago, I extend warm congratulations to Professor Rose Mary Bell Antoine on her appointment as the Pro Vice Chancellor and Principal of the St. Augustine Campus of the University of the West Indies, and wish you all the best for a productive and successful tenure. As a double graduate and former staff member of this year elite university, I offer my personal congratulations. We believe that UE, UTT, USC, COSTAT, and the other tertiary level institutions must engage in a harmonious framework to facilitate and foster inter-institutional, multidisciplinary research teams if we are to overcome the difficult challenges posed by the extreme weather climates, uh, climate events, sustainable food and energy security, as we continue to face difficult economic conditions which may persist for some time. Furthermore, such collaborations will allow individual countries and the region as a whole to leverage the new and fast emerging technologies of artificial intelligence and information and communication for improving the economic and social conditions of our peoples. We look forward to Professor Antwine playing an active role in this regard. So again, Professor Antwine, on behalf of all of us at Bush 11 institutions, congratulations and best wishes. Honorable Prime Minister of St. Lucia, the Honorable Chief Justice of Trinidad and Tobago, Honorable Chancellor, Distinguished Vice Chancellor, Ministers of Government, Leader of the Opposition, our dear inductee, Professor Antoine, Heads of Missions and other members of the Diplomatic Corps, esteemed judges, ladies and gentlemen, we are gathered here this afternoon to induct a rose into the ebullient garden of Caribbean intelligentsia. I arrived this afternoon from Guyana, along with my registrar, the esteemed Dr. Nigel Gravesandi. After much travel, so I apologize for not having my gown, but I had to come. I had to come because of three major reasons. One, many years ago, I came across a newspaper article of a beautiful young woman emblazoned across the front page, standing up with such courage in the face of terrible possible danger. This woman was Professor Antoine, and I've never forgotten that image all my life. Also, this campus was my campus many years ago when I was studying here, and I have received the gracious mentorship of many women and men on this campus. The beautiful example of the leadership of Pat Patricia Mohammed, a beautiful example of the grace of Rhoda Redock, and many others. And so as an alum, I had to come and pay homage to you. But most importantly, I came because this campus, of all the campuses in the UE system, has perhaps the closest relationship with the University of Guyana and Guyana itself. I bring greetings, therefore, on behalf of the whole country of Guyana, our president, our vice chancellors, deputy vice chancellors, the chancellor of the University of Guyana, past chancellor, as well as our minister of education. 
We believe that your rise as a woman and the kind of woman you are to this position is not accidental and that it is quite fortuitous that you should hold this position at this moment in UE and the Caribbean's history. The Caribbean and our regional institutions of which the University of Guyana and the University of the West Indies are two of the oldest ones. UE celebrating 75 years this year and the University of Guyana celebrating 60 years must rise as they have always done, but do more than rise to the challenge of the future of the region. No longer is it important or enough for us to speak of successful students, but we must rethink ourselves as the future molders of successful citizens. This, Madam Vice, Pro Vice Chancellor and Principal, requires an entire rethinking of who we are as educators and who our students are in, our, in the region. The University of Guyana continues to extend its hand in partnership to you, to the UE system, but most importantly, I, as the Vice Chancellor of the University of Guyana, and I was told by Professor Yudin Barito, who has always been very kind and a mentor, in her graciousness when she wrote to me to congratulate me that I was the first woman to become a Vice Chancellor in the region. And so in this regard, In this regard, I not only extend my hand to you in partnership, but my love and complete support to you as a sister academic. Anything that you need from UG is yours. And may I present to you the small token of our love and appreciation. Thank you, thank you all. Unfortunately, Professors Bourne and Copeland could not be with us today, but we are absolutely delighted that in our midst are three former principals, and I'm going to introduce them, I'm going to ask them to stand and to ask that you acknowledge their presence. Dr. Tiwari. <clears throat> Professor Bereton. <clears throat> and Professor Sankat. It's absolutely great to have you, thank you. Fittingly, our next musical presentation comes from the Law Fraternity. Larissa and Renelle Maharaj are sisters and both graduates of the Faculty of Law here. They're also members of the Trinidad and Tobago Youth Philharmonic, where they perform on violin and viola respectively. They will perform the prayer. Ladies and gentlemen, Larissa and Renelle Maharaj.
Simply beautiful. Did I mention that they were alumni? <laughs> yes. Uh, lawyers who play, and certainly lawyers who pray. And if you're a member of the university's executive management team, then you certainly have to do lots of that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Continuing with our greetings. I now invite Professor Denzel Williams, the Pro Vice Chancellor and Campus Principal of the Five Islands Campus, to bring greetings. And he'll be followed by Deputy Principals Professor Winston Moore, Cave Hill Campus, Dr. Emily Dickford, the Open Campus, and Professor Ian Boxhill, the Mona Campus. Colleagues, the floor is yours. When I got the invitation to speak, it said two minutes. And I spoke to our university registrar and asked him if this is two US minutes or two Trinidadian minutes. And under very strict instructions, he said to me, it's two Trinidadian minutes and there's no avenue for arbitrage. So I should get on with it. But despite that, I will still acknowledge our prime ministers, Prime Minister Patterson, Prime Minister uh, Anthony, Prime Minister Pear, Honorable Chief Justice, Chancellor Bermudez, Vice Chancellor Sir Hilary Beckles, Ministers of Government, I see Minister uh, Dolly Hare, Leader of the Opposition, our inductee this evening, uh, Professor Antoine, Heads of Missions, esteemed judges, and distinguished ladies and gentlemen. It is a sense of pride that I bring special greetings on behalf of the Five Islands family to celebrate the advancement of our colleague and friend, Professor Bell Antoine, to the pinnacle of administrative leadership of our St. Augustine campus. Professor Antoine joins a pantheon of distinguished academic leaders from Sherlock to Copeland, who have guided the transformation of the academic enterprise at St. Augustine. We celebrate their contribution to the advancement of this institution, and we look forward to our sister and friend, Professor Antoine, taking the baton and running her leg off the relay to continue the building of institutional resilience through the establishment of sound managerial hierarchies that will operate at the highest level of transparency accountability and ethical standards, hallmarks of good leadership that will no doubt ensure solid outcomes for our St. Augustine campus. I am confident that Professor Antoine will display the virtues of Jim Collins' level five leadership that will motivate and carry her team to greatness. For ladies and gentlemen, in her, we have an intellectual tour de force whose standards of academic excellence is beyond question. She's not only intellectually sophisticated in her academic pursuits, but she is also managerially astute as manifested in her track record of administrative and financial transformation as dean, head of department, and all the other portfolios which she husbanded while at the UWI and beyond. Her role as a public intellectual is also very much aligned with the UWI AAA plan, which, in the words of our former Vice Chancellor and distinguished Caribbean scholar, Professor Rex Nettleford, is to bring gown to town. Bringing gown to town is an important part of our new strategic plan as it ensures that the knowledge produced by our academy can find its way 
into solving real world problems that affect everyday life and livelihood. I am sure that she will be able to walk the very tight rope of public intellectualism and institutional leadership in order to ensure that her campus makes a contribution to the strategic vision and mission of our university. Ladies and gentlemen, to a visionary but practical leader, an intellectual giant, and a sound UWI citizen, I say on behalf of our Five Islands campus, heartiest congratulations, and we wish you the best for a successful term of office. Thank you. Prime Minister of St. Lucia, the Honorable Chief Justice of Trinidad and Tobago, Chancellor, Vice-Chancellor, Ministers of Government, Leader of the Opposition, our inductee, Heads of Missions and other members of the Diplomatic Corps, esteemed judges, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. I wish to convey greetings on behalf of Professor Clive Landis, Pro Vice Chancellor and Principal of the UE Kayfield Campus. And as much as he desired to be here this evening, Judy called for the launch of the Kayfield Campus's 60th anniversary celebrations. He does, however, send his heartfelt round congratulations and sincerely looks forward to working with Professor Antoine during her tenure as Principal of the UWI St. Augustine Campus. I share his sentiments and it's truly my distinct pleasure to be present at this induction ceremony. Professor Rosemary Bell Antoine is indeed very deserving. She's recognized as one of the most brilliant legal minds in the Caribbean, evidenced by her impressive publication record, her numerous awards for excellence, both within and outside of the UWA, her long standing track record for consultancies with agencies around the globe, and her legacy in the field of law administration, advocacy, and humanitarian work throughout the region. As her colleague, I respectfully acknowledge each of these achievements. As a member of senior management at the Kayfield campus, I am even more inclined to acknowledge the fact that this brilliant mind started her professional UWI journey on our humble campus. In 1986, Professor Antoine graduated from UWI, UWI Kayfield campus with her, LLB at the, at, with her LLB. Not only did she graduate with honors, she was also successful in obtaining the Student of the Year Award, in addition to the Faculty of Award for Labor Law. In the same year, she was also a member of the debating team that won the Jessup International Law Moot Competition in Washington, DC. This was a this was a first time for the University of the West Indies to win this prize. It was therefore obvious that she was destined for greatness. I must note that, sorry, of course, Principal Antoine's relationship with the Kayfield campus was not only at the undergraduate level, but she also returned to the campus to serve as a lecturer before Faculty of Law from 1989 to 1998. She may have technically returned to her roots, but she has always maintained a strong relationship with the Kayfield campus's staff and students. Professor Antoine is a lady of firsts, of many firsts. She was, the fir she was first inducted as director and initiator of the successful Master of Law LLM program, the first multi-campus hybrid delivery program at the UWI, launched in 2002. She became one of the youngest UWI professors. And she was also the first sitting dean of the Faculty, faculty of Law here at the St. Augustine campus. In 2021, she was appointed Pro Vice Chancellor of Graduate Studies and Research. And it is at this juncture I can personally attest to Professor Antoine's passion and energy. During her tenure as PVC of Graduate Studies and Research, I had the privilege in my capacity of chair of research and innovation and community at KPhil, of attending many meetings chaired by her. 
Throughout that time, she demonstrated eagerness, determination, and passion to push the development of entrepreneurship throughout the UWI. This same passion and commitment were also displayed when she established the International Human Rights Clinic, which has been described as an innovative legal education model twinning academia and activism and, pra and practitioners. There is still no comparison to her passion for human rights and advocacy. She has been widely re recognized as a champion for health, discriminate, discrimination, and gender issues, among many other things. And she's not afraid to put herself on the front lines. I only have two minutes, which I think I've slightly gone over. <laughs> I do, however, need to reiterate that we at the Capel campus are extremely proud of all that she has accomplished. And we have no doubt that this will be replicated and even increased throughout her appointment as the newest principal of the St. Augustine campus. On behalf of Principal Landis and the whole UWI family, congratulations, Principal Antoine. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Prime Minister of St. Lucia, the Honorable Chief Justice of Trinidad and Tobago, Chancellor, Vice Chancellor, Ministers of Government, Leader of the Opposition, our inductee, Heads of Missions, and other members of the Diplomatic Corps, esteemed judges, ladies and gentlemen. I am provide, presenting you a deeply summarized version of a personally written tribute from, from the principal, um, the PVC and the principal of the Open Campus, now Global Campus, Dr. Francis Severin. I am profoundly delighted to convey warm greetings paired with heartfelt congratulations on behalf of the UWI Global Campus on this jubilant occasion of Professor Rosemary Bell Antoine's induction as the principal of the St. Augustine campus of the UWI. Professor Antoine is a Trinidadian and Caribbean, Caribbean legal luminary who is at the top of her game. She knows the UWI through and through, and her career has unequivocally demonstrated that she is passionate, committed, and fully engaged in this great institution. Her dedication and effort have never flickered. This is exemplified in her well-deserved receipt of the Vice Chancellor's Award for Excellence on two occasions, first for excellence in research and later for excellence in public service. Notwithstanding her many accomplishments, it is in meeting Rosemary personally that you become more fascinated with her and respectful of the woman that she is. Plain speaking and down to earth are the attributes that rush the mind in encountering her. No one meeting her outside of the context of her personal life would have pegged her as the wife of a prime minister while her husband held that post in St. Lucia. Nor did she look to be treated in an exceptional way because of this. Indeed, whether at home, working in her garden, on her beautiful mosaics, at public functions, or in her professional capacity, she conveys a sense of being entirely comfortable in her skin with her take it or leave it attitude. Today we acknowledge you, Professor Antoine, a woman of distinction. We in the Global Campus say cheers and congratulations to you on your elevation to the post of principal of the St. Augustine campus. We are entirely confident that under your leadership, the students and staff of your campus will continue to thrive. We wish you a fruitful tenure as PVC and principal. May wisdom, health, and wellness continue to accompany you every step of the journey. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, permit me to follow the protocol as laid out by the university registrar. But in so doing, I would like to also acknowledge 
the Prime Minister St. Lucia, the former Prime Minister St. Lucia, and of course, the former Prime Minister of Jamaica, the Honourable P.J. Patterson. I would also like to acknowledge our Chancellor and our Vice Chancellor, but in particular, the person of the moment, Professor Rosemary Antoine. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here representing the principal of the Mona campus, Pro Vice Chancellor, Professor Dale Weber, who is unavoidably absent, and the words that I will speak to you, that I will convey today, today are his words. Today's formal ceremony is to recognize and celebrate the new campus principal of the St. Augustine campus, Professor Rosemary Bell Antoine. This ceremony comes at an important time in the institution's history. The University of the West Indies is currently celebrating its 75th anniversary. This university is built on a solid foundation. It plays an important role in the development of this region. The appointment of Professor Rosemary Bell Antoine as principal is a clear signal that the UWI remains committed to that role. In Professor Antoine, we get one of the region's foremost legal minds. She is also a very bold administrator and one who is not afraid to stand her ground and defend her position in a room filled with different opinions or uh, viewpoints. I sincerely admire how she elevates women, challenging the stereotype that women do not support other women. She's resilient, balancing her strength and forthrightness with generosity and compassion. With these qualities, the UWI has made the right choice in appointing her to lead the St. Augustine campus into the future. I'm indeed confident that Professor Antoine will draw on her many talents to overcome many of the challenges that she's likely to be faced with during her tenure. The UWI Mona campus stands ready and willing to provide support and advice to her as we collectively strive to meet the institution's strategic needs. Finally, let me say that the entire senior management at the Mona campus wish to convey to Professor Antoine that they too will stand with her and wish her all the best in her new leadership role. From my own part, ladies and gentlemen, because um, she might not remember, but we graduated in the same year from KFL campus. She does remember, because I remember her as a very active student um, in the law faculty and in general, and also for Carnival. Um, <laughs> and it was clear from then that um, she would be in a role such as this. I personally would like to convey my congratulations to her and leave you with an Ethiopian proverb. It says, when women lead, rivers flow upstream. Thank you. Thank you. You know, as university registrar, I have the distinct privilege of working very closely with each member of the executive management team. Uh, I, in my many conversations with Professor Belantuan, I, 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 I would have discovered that she's a lover of dogs and in fact has many. I've not met them, but I've heard them. <laughs> what, I, what I did not know that was that she was a, she's a trained classical soloist, and so principal, you're going to absolutely love our next performer. I, 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 he is a Bijet Ankateso. He's an award-winning Indian classical vocalist, and he's also a recent graduate of the Department of Creative and Festival Arts. And so Abhijit will perform hmm, Ratan Lambian. Did I get that right? Ladies and gentlemen, Abhijit. <laughs>
From the smile on Principal Antoine's face, you know that she thoroughly enjoyed it. Thank you, Abija. Ladies and gentlemen, it's our final round of greetings. I thought you were going to applause. <laughs> I now call on Ms. Sharon Christopher, our campus council chair here at St. Augustine, and she'll be followed by the most honorable P.J. Patterson, former prime minister of Jamaica, and then the honorable Nyan Gadsby Dolly, who is also a UWI alumna. She's minister of education here in Trinidad. Do I need to move this? That's okay. Okay. Let me adopt the salutations of the university registrar and simply say, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Days before the official announcement of the appointment of Professor Bell Antoine as principal was made, one of the newspapers in Trinidad and Tobago scooped the story with a headline, Woman is Boss. The story referred to the fact that with this appointment, the top leadership positions 
in the St. Augustine campus would be held by women. Now, many of my male colleagues have continuously quipped that I must be overjoyed with this state of events. Although this is somewhat irritating, truth be told, as I stand here today at the first induction of a female principal in the campus's 63-year-old history, I am indeed delighted. I am also pleased that Professor Antoine is the first member of the legal profession to hold such a post. Let me make it clear, though, that Professor Antoine was not selected because she is a woman or because she is a lawyer. She was selected because she was found to be the best candidate at the end of a rigorous recruitment process. <laughs> Professor Antoine has been appointed at a time in which the University of the West Indies is undergoing significant transformational change to deal with current realities and to assist it in moving into a bright and sustainable future. Professor Antoine, in spite of your outstanding records of achievements to date, I have no doubt that you are, are already discovering that this new journey is not an easy one. My advice to you, and I can quote from President Obama, is to face the brutal realities, but always have the audacity of hope. I wish you strength, wisdom, a good sense of humor, in the years ahead, and I assure, you, I assure you that you have my full support and the support of the members of the, of the St. Augustine campus of the University of the West Indies. Congratulations on this appointment. Prime Minister of St. Lucia and former Prime Minister of St. Lucia and husband in chief, <laughs> Chief Justice, Eminent Chancellor and Vice Chancellor, Pro Vice Chancellors, Ministers of Government, Your Excellencies, Distinguished ladies and gentlemen all, I feel like a batsman coming to the crease after Greenwich, Haynes, Sobers, Kanai, Richards, Gale, and Lara. <laughs> Not even fast bowler Courtney Walsh, who has made the number 11 position his own, has ever been invited to bat at number 13. <laughs> but I have traveled too far to fail to trouble the scorer and only to carry the water and the towels. <laughs> Looking around, I think I can claim to be the oldest among you who entered UCWI. I went in as a Jamaican and I left as an unrepentant Caribbean devotee. I am therefore honored and felt obliged to be here to share in this occasion which is more than of symbolic importance. I have met Professor Antoine face to face on very few occasions. The first being at the start of our honeymoon 
which is hardly an opportunity for any other than her husband to get acquainted. But she has good reason to know the extent to which I have followed closely the evolution of our illustrious career as a brilliant jurist who seeks to create sound pillars on which to build our own Caribbean jurisprudence. Her formidable record of achievements speaks for itself and there is no need to burnish pure gold. Her steps at every stage in her life and professional undertakings have never failed to earn the stamp and brand of excellence. Her eminence as a legal luminary is apodictic. She has that intuitive grasp of the awesome power and transformative force of the law, which has made her a true revolutionary in addressing the thorny issues of indigenous rights, gender identity, racial discrimination, and abuse of governmental powers. She is a formidable advocate for the protection of constitutional rights within our parliamentary democracies as we still contend with the plagues of terrorism and violence alongside the scourge that slavery and the obscene plantation system have left behind. 75 years ago, UWI was founded in the interaction of cross currents of Caribbean history and geography as a shining light in the West to fulfill the demands of our own destiny. What began in a single location is now multi-purpose and multi-layered. Professor Antoine is one of its brightest and most amazing daughters. On three distinct campuses, our pro-vice-chancellor was able to garner and build personal relationships and friendships at the most granular levels. That has enabled her in professional life to know and work with people across the entire region through constructive engagements in learning, teaching, research projects, and community service. She comes fully equipped and uniquely suited to take the helm at St. Augustine amidst a period of unprecedented global turbulence, which demands extraordinary skills if our university is to fulfill its destiny in the entire Caribbean landscape. Her UWI provenance will be an admirable asset as she now joins the leadership hierarchy devoted to preserve and promote a holistic development of a regional university which seems to bring unity, solidarity, and prestige to our Caribbean. But faculties and students beware for she has a strict work ethic and her template of excellence does not permit mediocrity or indolence. Her commitment to building this university is unquestionable, but that should not conceal her insatiable appetite to compete. So no campus can bask in the glory of previous accomplishments, for I believe she is determined to make this campus number one. 
we shall see. Already, she has started to break new ground in marketing. I saw it on my flight down yesterday with an advertorial promoting exciting opportunities at St. Augustine. I welcome her highlights of entrepreneurship and innovation. Among her key objectives are food security and disaster management, which demand greater emphasis in tertiary research to meet the severity of these challenges. Once upon a time, it was claimed that cricket and UWI were the only two institutions binding the West Indies together. With our fluctuating fortunes in the game, <laughs> UWI remains the only sound cohesive force on which we can rely to overcome the dynamics of insularity, of diversity in continental ethnic origins, of political factions, and differences in religious beliefs. As the late Black Stalin, sometimes known as Dr. Leroy Callista, advocated to push one common intention for a better life in the region, for with women and with children, that must be the ambition of the Caribbean man. I am confident that under her astute and innovative leadership, she will work assiduously to make sure that St. Augustine manages to safeguard the Caribbean dream while inculcating in faculties and students alike a truly regional ethos of excellence and inclusiveness, one that defies common and prevalent stereotypes of us as a people who refuse to be categorized as living in anyone else's backyard. Today's ceremony is therefore, I repeat, more than symbolic. Professor Antoine, I am convinced that as one committed to an egalitarian society, you will, in your principal's tenure, use your voice and expertise to the upliftment of the region, not just in legal matters, but extensively extensively for social justice and equitable development. Today, we witness the pedagogic ascendancy of a visionary leader who is fully equipped and ready to sustain excellence in our university, one rooted in the Caribbean that is fully geared to advance learning, create knowledge, and foster innovation for the positive transformation of the Caribbean. By any test, Professor Antoine is plainly and simply the best. I regard it as a unique privilege to join in resounding salute to a catalytic force as we celebrate the appointment of a principal who now takes the forefront in the quest at St. Augustine to generate knowledge, innovation, wisdom, and thereby to release the creative potential of our people in making this Caribbean the most precious jewel on Mother Earth.
Uh, ladies and gentlemen, and, and Prime Minister will permit my saying, he's recovering from a vehicular accident, and so we are very happy that he was able to make it today. <laughs> Minister. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. And if difficulty was expressed at number 13, <laughs> being the last of the last group, the young persons and the young at heart might forgive me for saying, last, last. <laughs> Allow me to recognize simply my colleagues and certainly the Prime Minister of St. Lucia, the former Prime Minister, so Honorable Chief Justice, Chancellor, Vice Chancellor, our inductee herself, and the husband in chief. <laughs> Founded in 1948, the University of the West Indies has for the past 75 years been the cornerstone of innovation and progress that continues to impact Trinidad and Tobago, our region, and indeed the world. It was Trinidad and Tobago's first prime minister who insisted on establishing a campus of the UE in Trinidad and Tobago because he knew it was a way to develop the people of this country. Indeed, if we look at our government, if we look at our country, we see many representatives of that dream playing itself out in Trinidad and Tobago today. Even now, at the heart of the UE's mission is a commitment to service through its continuous thrust to ensure that its range of educational programming not only meets the developmental needs of Trinidad and Tobago and the region, but provides opportunities that cultivate creativity and propel social change. This university has served for many years as an incubator for the exchange of ideas, opening up new frontiers of thought, public discourse, and through public lectures, debates, interdisciplinary research, initiatives, and collaborations, this university has given rise to an amalgamation of new ideas that are changing the face of the Caribbean and the world. It is against this backdrop that I am pleased to join with you in welcoming Professor Rosemary Bellantwine, UE's ninth principal and poor vice chancellor of the St. Augustine campus. The number nine appears in various ideologically interesting places. If you are a Christian, the fruit of the spirit comprise nine graces. The gifts of the spirit are also nine in number. Nine is said to be symbolic of blessings, inner strength, and wisdom. And superstition 101 posits that a cat has nine lives. In consideration of the reason for which we are all gathered here today, that last proverbial saying resonates, as it serves as a powerful metaphor for resilience and survival despite difficult circumstances. And this is something that the UB stands for. Having faced its own challenges over 75 years, especially in the last few years with COVID-19. And it is something that I am sure Professor Bella Antoine can speak to, given her advocacy for social justice. As we continue on our upward trajectory of strategic partnerships directly impacting our schools, our children, the ministry looks forward to more meaningful collaboration and fervent relationships with the UE as we seek to strengthen the tie between our primary and secondary sector and our tertiary education sector. Professor Bell Antoine, your task is a demanding undertaking, but one at which I am confident you will succeed. You will provide leadership and inspiration to the students, staff, and community. You will provide vision to the university and support and collegiality to the council. To do so will require copious dollops of passion, dedication, creativity, and an unwavering commitment to excellence. But to those up to the challenge, as you undoubtedly are, 
this noble service will be immensely rewarding. I thank you for offering yourself to serve, and on behalf of the Ministry of Education and the Government of Trinidad and Tobago, I bestow upon you best wishes and God's blessings. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now at that very special moment, the one that's responsible for our being here this afternoon. So let me invite our Vice Chancellor, Professor Sir Hilary Beckles, to present the principal of the St. Augustine campus for induction. It is now my distinct honor and privilege and pleasure to invite Professor Antoine to come to the center of the stage where she shall be robed. I now invite the Chancellor, Mr. Robert Bermudez, to formally induct Professor Rosemarie Bell Antoine as principal of the St. Augustine campus. Congratulations, Rosemarie. Well done. Sit for a second. Or oh, you want to stand up? Ladies and gentlemen, if I may associate myself with the greetings given by the registrar, um, this is a very important evening for me. It is a celebration of uh, Professor Antoine's advancement in our society. This, the first time I attended an induction ceremony was for the principal, for a principal, was, was for Professor Brian Copeland, who took up the mantle of leadership and, was, and it was my pleasure and honor to work with him over the period 2017 to 2022. I'd like to take this opportunity on behalf of the university to thank him for his service. Most of my remarks have already been made by the 14 previous <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Um, they spoke of the important fact that this is the 75th anniversary of the university. They spoke about the fact that Rosemary Bell Antoine is a daughter of the Caribbean, a graduate of the University of the West Indies, an award-winning scholar who has made significant contribution to policy and jurisprudence in the Caribbean. All that is left to me, really, is to draw her attention to a comment she made at an earlier point in her life. To quote her, it is my belief that as a Caribbean people, we do not always have to follow. We can lead be original, pioneering, and the best in the world at what we do. I want to encourage us to think big 
and believe in ourselves. I would like to associate myself with those comments as I deeply believe that, that they are true and possible. And I would like to charge Professor, now Principal and Pro Vice Chancellor Antoine to lead with those words in her mind for the rest of the time she serves as Principal of this campus and Pro Vice Chancellor of the University of the West Indies. By the power vested in me and on behalf of the University of the West Indies, I induct you formally as principal of the St. Augustine campus of the University of the West Indies. Congratulations. the newly inducted principal and pro vice chancellor will now address the company. Prime Minister of St. Lucia, Honorable Philip J. Payer, the Honorable Chief Justice of Trinidad and Tobago, Chancellor, and I do wish to acknowledge our visiting Speaker of the House from St. Lucia, Mr. Claudius Francis, Vice Chancellor, Ministers of Government, Leader of the Opposition, Special Guest Speaker, the Most Honorable P.J. Patterson of Jamaica, Heads of Missions and other members of the Diplomatic Corps, esteemed judges, ladies and gentlemen. Some paths choose us. Growing up, everyone said I should be a lawyer, but I rebelled against that because I was determined to save the world and law seemed to be only about money. So I signed up for management. But then my head girl, Joanne Julian, persuaded me that law is good for social reform and I should be a lawyer, so I switched. So law chose me. I thought too that administration would stifle academic freedom and straitjacket me, not to mention health issues and living in two countries. I was content to be the go-to background person until literally on my hospital bed in France, Cave Hill Law Dean McIntosh rang and said, Rosemary, I have made you my deputy dean. He would not hear no, so at that time, leadership chose me. At each rung, it was my colleagues who urged me forward. Blame former principal Eudine Barito, because she first told me some years ago, you have to be the next principal of Cave Hill. When she heard that people were asking me about judiciary, she retorted, no, we can't afford you to be silenced as yet. <laughs> I began to think I could, should do this. And I have been fortunate to be able to marry my legal career with my passion, creative impulse and philosophy, even my love of nature. Law allowed me to speak up for those who could not to amplify their voices in the search for social justice and help forge a Caribbean society of which we could be proud. For me, just as law is a social engineer, scholarship serves to fuel advocacy and development and advance humanity. Many find it surprising that I do not focus on court work. Actually, I had planned to lecture only for three years, but academia provides intellectual stimulation, challenge, and change that drives and sustains me. People often call me an activist or change agent, as you heard, but my impetus then and now was simply to be a disruptor of the status quo where it did not truly work for its purpose or for the majority of our citizens. In truth, that has been a characteristic since early childhood. It seems inevitable that I landed at the UE, itself created with 33 medical students, the Caribbean change makers of their time. The foundation that shaped me, a family of eight children, 
strong-minded, highly intellectual and argumentative, taught me confidence. You had to fight to get a word in and gave me an inquiring mind. An egalitarian ethos seemed natural with a mother, a brilliant black woman from Grenada, and a white privileged father who broke all social ties to be with the love of his life, whom he met on the train. They came to Arima in the late 1950s, ostensibly to open the first sports and toy shop, but rarely to escape what we now term race discrimination. Every year, the Arima Tennis Club would invite him alone, Mr. Jean-Marie Alphonse Antoine, and not his black wife. This might have sown the seeds for my social activism, and some have said rebellion. Music, painting, poetry, reading, writing plays and calypsos, and even astronomy were the norm in my household, a space rich with robust and reflective discussions on the issues of the day. If, as has been said, my work is original and probing, it is no doubt because of that heritage. With six going to UWE and three scholarship winners, my family was clearly drawn to the rigor and thrusts of academia. At one time, three Antoines were lecturing at UWE St. Augustine at the same time. One in math, Dr. Robin, one in English, Dr. Jean, and me in law. They must have thought we were mafia. <laughs> the intangibles, values, fairness, character, intellect, service, and courage were valued more than material things and big jobs. Special math more attractive than medicine, one even becoming a nun. The hope to be the rich lawyer, me, chose legal academia instead. The majestic Arima Mountains and the hiking trails of the Acerite Nature Center perhaps gave me a tendency to aim high and believe anything is possible. Incidentally, I was the first, if not only, person to be married at Acerite. We planted a powder puff tree, and my husband was warned that if that tree ever died, well, <laughs> for many years he religiously visited that tree, and it is still standing. My teacher's proud boast that Rosemary, Puff, prefect, and head girl always questions, fights for her classmates, was my poor mother's exasperation. She would say, you tell Rosemary A, she has to answer B, C, and D. But then I got $10 and a medal for being born an independence baby, supposedly the reason for my fierce independent spirit. No surprise then that when I was arrested trying to protect my protesting students at Cave Hill and my husband, then prime minister, was called, he would have said famously, Rosemary can take care of herself. <laughs> A student gave me a cup, you deserve a drink. <laughs> and Vice Chancellor Nettleford wrote, thanking me for taking care of the children. That inquiring spirit has served me in good stead in both my legal and administrative career, where so often things do need to be interrogated and to change. Whether it be denying migrant children education, or why persons must stay on remand 15 to 20 years and more, or mindless bureaucracy. Looking back, I see the trajectory of my life, even the Santa Rosa youth group that I was in, doing charitable work, feeding families, repairing houses, and witnessing firsthand the often unseen and hidden poverty and inequity in our society helped fashion me. I also noticed that what I saw in the youth group was invisible to my convent friends. Unawareness, a sense of denial or even apathy was and is typical for many. So my family and Arima formed me. However, it was the UWE that honed me first as a student, later as an academic and administrator. The diverse trends of my work in several legal disciplines intersect. Many wonder why, with a PhD in financial law and specialist in labor law, I have focused so much on rights, equity, and justice. The reason is that very early on, I realized that the sine qua non of all the work I could possibly do as a lawyer and academic 
was rooted in social justice. Ultimately, the common denominator is wanting to improve lives. As Nobel laureate Marita Sen said, human rights is the key to development, and it is now acknowledged by the SDGs. More recently, billionaire hardcore business people like Bill Gates and Steve Jobs have also located social justice and rights as the core values that shape civilization. I intend to place this at the center of what we do at the UE St. Augustine. <laughs> Thank you. For me, the meaning of civil liberties, like equality, resides in economic and social rights, enshrined in education, health, work, water, and the environment. When the big buildings and grandiose schemes are gone, what will be remembered is the collective humanistic intellectual force that resides in the UE. This is no esoteric stance. The negative effects of a failure to secure equity, decent work, protect the vulnerable and marginalized in our societies is visible. It impacts productivity, crime, the family, and even ultimately the economy. Interestingly, human rights used to be a bad word. When I established a discrimination law course in the 90s, there was no legislation. I have seen it become mainstream. Indeed, since COVID, everyone is an expert in human rights. My task in People Empowerment involves harnessing our vast UWE talent, reclaiming the collective UWE identity and magic, and proclaiming it to the world. While our significant UWE contribution has not diminished, it has become somewhat invisibilized. Individual consultants flourish, but UE's collective voice and presence need to be stronger. The housewife must appreciate that the yam or the sanitizer she buys in the supermarket are innovations from our labs. We are too often the quiet soldiers in not so quiet revolutions. My job is to ensure that we remain visible, that all stakeholders look to the UE to do the important developmental work of the region and to nurture our staff to be able to be champions of change. This in itself can increase our market value and bring tangible economic benefits. First steps are our Newsday Sunday series, UE Underground, launched last week, featuring our top scientists and our Caribbean Beat feature, which uh, Honorable PJ Patterson saw on the plane. I myself have been fortunate to have been engaged in pioneering consultancy work whether it be harmonizing CARICOM labor law, the catalyst for labor law reform in the region, which ushered in unfair dismissal, equality, safety, and other laws, or HIV, migrant justice, leading an international drafting team hired by the UK government to restore democracy to the TCI, defending the juristic principles of the Caribbean offshore financial industry against the double standards of the onshore countries 25 years ago, but it's now back in the news because of unfair banking laws. My CARICOM CSME report, or even more recently, Ganja reform. These jurisprudential innovations required creativity and daring to go against the status quo. The labor code I drafted in St. Lucia is still the only law with HIV protection, and in the Bahamas, preventing the exploitation of what I call permanently temporary workers. Some of what I fought for in the early days, such as when CARICOM asked me to redefine the HIV rights approach for a broader non-discrimination agenda, is now accepted. But many disagreed with me then. So it has not been without controversy. You try effecting labor law reform in a task force with unions and employers, or marijuana reform in a town hall full of church people and rasters. Minister, you remember, right? And it is debatable whether I got more blows for speaking out about too high lawyer fees in my address to the opening of the law term or on mandatory vaccination. It is our duty 
mine, and the universities to inform debate on important socio-legal issues. As Martin Luther King said, the ultimate tragedy is not the oppression and cruelty by the bad people, but the silence over that by the good people. I am grateful to have had the opportunity to do such fascinating legal and social reform, developmental work throughout the region, my dream. It is a joyous feeling when one's outputs do not sit on a shelf, but breathes life and effects real change to laws and to lives. Later, this launched me on the international plane at the OAS, UN, and beyond. But undoubtedly, none of this could have been achieved without the UB, which gave me the start and support. As a young lecturer in 1991, my dean, Liverpool, and principal, Sir Keith Hunt, took a chance on me and gave me the consultancy for the CARICOM labor law project, which had stalled. I refused payment, but the rewards were tenfold. This was the impetus for the diverse consultancies and body of work that have borne visible fruit, including an invitation to work at the ILO Geneva. You understand then my commitment to harness the talent at St. Augustine. I cherish to my colleagues along the way who have inspired, encouraged, and supporting me, even nominating me twice for the VC's Award of Excellence. I treasure the soldiers from NGOs and churches and governments, international organizations, and people from all walks of life who walked many difficult paths with me demanding change. In my journey, students hold a special place. Not having children of my own, it has been a special joy and responsibility to care for our young people, help shape their lives positively, and be inspired by them. But my work is not yet finished, and being principal gives me the opportunity to broaden its scope and identify the inheritors of that work. As an avid gardener, I want to grow and cultivate people and institutions. Let me be the conduit, the builder. Some of that was my developmental focus as dean, establishing the clinic, bidding for faculty donor projects, new directions like oil and gas law, the faculty's historic litigation on disability and remand. Colleagues were invited to lead on important issues like children's rights and indigenous peoples. But as principal, there is a broader landscape and opportunity. And if we walk with integrity, others will follow. The UE gives me inspiration and energizes me. This is why I hope to reestablish our senior common room. It was at the Cave Hill SCR. <laughs> I thought you would like that. It was at the Cave Hill SCR that I formed bonds with other colleagues in other disciplines which nurtured and broadened my work and led to interdisciplinary publications. Every university needs a thinking space to create synergies with colleagues. I am guided by my belief in our exceptional nature as Caribbean people and an imperative to make a positive contribution to society. We are as intelligent, creative, talented, and capable as anyone, anywhere, and our abilities find their greatest expression in service. I am fortunate to be part of an institution that gives me the opportunity to work so closely in alignment with these values. So often I have seen Caribbean academics and students shine at international fora and at the top universities some in the audience here today. My philosophy has always been that a university, this campus, must be entrenched in its community to have relevance, a vibrant, impactful, and revered social actor with cutting edge research. I want to expand the UE from the classroom to the communities. Scholarship should be taken to the people. It is then that our research, our teaching, will be grounded and transformative. And in this goal, we should partner not just with governments and the private sector, but with NGOs. And we have started 
Last month, we went to Maruga. UWE can indeed touch people and change lives. My most poignant memory from my accident is hearing that remand prisoners, clients, telephoned my sister, worried, and actually cried. This was the power of the institution and the hope we can bring. In my frame of education for true development, I propose a more progressive approach to access, expanding to the underserved and forgotten. We have been insensitive to the socioeconomic and sociocultural constraints, even ethnic and gender, to accessing education, especially in our professions. Admissions can no longer be based purely on CAPE results. <laughs> this was the rationale for the Macandal Daga Scholarship, giving social activists access to the elitist law school. We also provided quotas for law enforcement and persons with disabilities, but more needs to be done. I have asked my colleagues to reconsider and refashion our approach to access to the UE to encompass a broader vision that examines deep structural issues in the society and to consider other desirable attributes that we wish to inculcate in our graduates. This is not past breaking. The Rhodes and other scholarships emphasize not just academics, but leadership and extracurricular and other things. Importantly, the St. Augustine campus has a key role to play in healing our wounded society. I believe in its power as a unifying force invoking patriotic consciousness. The voice of the UE, St. Augustine, must be neutral, confident but respectful, probing but at the same time reassuring because of the knowledge that within our UE, there resides competencies and talents that give hope for the future. I remain a regionalist. I'm also a proud inter-campus citizen experiencing three campuses, as you heard, before returning here as Dean Law with an assignment to build a new faculty. The only trainee at Norman Manley Law School, I spent more time on artistic exploits than in the law classroom. Art at the Edna Manley School, bringing Paul Keynes to Jamaica, touring the entire Jamaica with the UE singers under the esteemed Noel Dexter, and that was the piece you heard the very talented Natalia uh, Doppel sing. And I want to also say that the Vice Chancellor Beckel's encouragement for students to embrace the UE regional experience, doing a semester in a different campus, for instance, is not slight. This is how we will understand and trust each other enough to construct a genuine Caribbean community. The UE itself is a, is a great institution, but I dare say that the St. Augustine campus has some unique strengths which we will leverage. Seismic Unit International Relations Institute, for long the only engineering faculty, the only faculty of agriculture, of agriculture and other faculties can create synergies and work with a strong multidisciplinary focus because of these. For example, it's a good vantage point to study our NCD epidemic with the nutrition experts in agriculture and the food security imperative. St. Augustine is also physically and psychologically close to two commercial and cultural giants, Latin America and Guyana. I hope to be able to use my already strong links due to my OAS work and in Guyana for the benefit of the campus. And we are already working on programs and collaborations. This campus's vision is centered on the huge issues of our time. Decades doing interdisciplinary research and education on climate change, including futuristic agriculture, the blue economy, renewables, its health deficits have placed us at the forefront of this global threat. Yet, at this moment of urgency, great research is necessary, but not sufficient. We must do more. 
It is an absolute imperative for us to bring the science, not just to policymakers, but to the people, to have real impact and help to save the planet and ourselves. The average citizen must identify with it, experience it, believe in it. The apathy is frightening. We do not see the connections when a young boy from a poor family gets dengue because there are more mosquitoes, or waterborne diseases from floods, or mudslides because they cut down all the trees, or even our weak immune systems due to poor nutrition caused by leached soil, and the list goes on. The interconnections with poverty are also too opaque. Climate justice and a just transition must be included. An activist approach to the science is required, empowering our Caribbean citizens to make the right choices. Thinking green must become a way of life. And it requires research from the ground up, involving the farmers, clamoring for greener production like natural-based feed, one of our projects by culture, by the way, it also demands spearheading initiatives, such as industry linkages and conceptualizing tax incentives for green industry and lifestyles. We are acknowledged international thought leaders and power brokers here. To set this example, I have started to green the campus and I'm working to finalize an agreement with Blue Waters to set up a recycling post. <laughs> the the intersections between climate change and practically every other discipline are now only too obvious, whether it be the food we eat or don't eat, health, transport, education, homes, citizen insecurity, law, sport. This is why, relying on the many UE experts in the field as PVC, I spearheaded a multidisciplinary cross-campus post-grad degree in climate studies. I am convinced more than ever that our direction as scholars centered on solutions must be interdisciplinary and collaborative. This is as true for entrepreneurship and innovation as it is for climate studies, general science, law, and even the arts, which now relies heavily on digitization. We must become renaissance thinkers and problem solvers, creating multi-skilled students. Converting our intellectual efforts into monetary gain through a more entrepreneurial thrust, including social entrepreneurship, remains a key agenda for my tenure, as it has been for at least three previous administrative regimes. And you saw we have three principals here. They were all working on this. This campus has been a UE leader. I value change but it must be nuanced with continuity and constancy if we are to build, not brocking down for brocking down's sake and legacy. We will approach the routine in more enterprising ways, converting into financial products, but a large slice is exciting innovations from our labs and from the imaginations of our scholars. Several of our innovative products are already patented and certified. We continue to source the right manufacturers and investment partners from the private sector to leverage these exciting opportunities to commercialize from lab to shelf, like our patented sealants, roofing compounds, fingerprinting, and so on. Last month, after years, we were finally able to fulfill the dream of our internationally renowned Cocoa Research Center. We obtained funding and awarded a contract for a cocoa factory. We are excited. I also envisage St. Augustine as a thriving cultural center of arts, music, and film with an entrepreneurial base, fitting for the land of Calypso, Chutney, Steel Pan, and Radio Soaps. We will continue to incentivize and provide mentorship to entrepreneurs and startups from both staff and students, promoting this symbiotic relationship between academia and private sector endeavor. I am grateful for the already emerging initiatives and partnerships from giants in our private sector, 
in the first few months of my tenure, such as the Sabga family respected philanthropists, where plans are underway to establish an Ansi McCall UE Entrepreneurship Fund. We are also moving ahead with the planned UE Global Offshore School of Medicine, building on decades of recognized first-rate medical teaching and research. We hope to attract tax incentives for alumni donors under a revamped alumni program and endowment fund. Creating an entrepreneurial culture requires the campus to be agile, leaving behind old ways which have sometimes failed us. Meeting the needs of students and preparing them for this new, more complex world would remain a top priority. These are times when the very relevance of university is being challenged. We need to recalibrate our programming to encourage active and on-the-job learning, and we must also address the new financial realities, whether through high-flex, flexible programming or internships. Returning to Trinidad, I was actually shocked at the level of student poverty. I realize now that I met only higher income law students at CAFIL because they could afford it. Having to personally come to the aid of so many students for rent and even groceries cements my determination to address these challenges. During COVID, for example, the survey of my law faculty revealed that 65 students out of under 400 had no computer or internet. I disagree with those who say we do not have a duty to help facilitate access. We must have sustainable fees for the campus if we are to survive, but we must also protect our students by speaking more directly with banks private sector, increasing bursaries, and promoting innovative bond arrangements in exchange for financial assistance and loan schemes. I also hope to have closer linkages and communications with government to better understand and serve the national agenda. Recall that Eric Williams, scholar and nation builder, was a chancellor of this university and helped shape the UB ethos. Given what I have said about the brilliance and talent of Caribbean people, I lament often the trend peculiar to this country where so many of our young people refuse to come to UE. This is tantamount to the recolonization of our education. The unfortunate implications include the increase of the brain drain, alienation with the society, pressure on the public purse, and undermined development. And it's no use playing a blame game, but it's a good example of the pothole road paved with good intentions. I applaud the government for reducing the over 600 scholarships that allow winners to go anywhere in the world to study, and they did. I have pledged to do something about it too, not just advocacy, but a more vigorous attempt to do joint degrees with foreign universities to persuade this sector of the value of the UE degree. Putting people first means understanding. I started my tenure with principal listening sessions. It was an exhilarating and incredibly learning experience to hear not just problems, but ideas for growth. Some we have begun to implement, like a child care crash and staff markets. Today, today I have outlined the conceptual framework and philosophy for my path forward. Like the old people, I'm a little superstitious about talking too much about detailed plans beforehand. But soon you will be judging me on the deliverables. We, the UE, the region, have had plenty grand vision. What we sometimes fall short on is the implementation. I have always been the most impatient person I know but there really is little time to do the things we really want to do and make the changes that we must make. As an unapologetic pragmatist, what I can promise you is that I, we, will build one step at a time. Our dreams are nothing if not backed up by practical action and a sense of purpose. My commitment to the UE, which has given me so much and to which I have given my best, 
remains unwavering. As we celebrate our 75th year, together with generations of alumni, we are surging ahead, realigning our resources to meet the challenges in our mission to achieve socioeconomic and ecological sustainability for our region, as we have always done, COVID being the last example. Just my luck, I have come at a time of financial crisis. However, I am confident that the UE St. Augustine can and will thrive. We will have to work very hard, show great resilience, and harness our creative dynamism, our Caribbean elan. It will not be easy, but as Kaiso poet extraordinaire Dr. Black Stalin told us, we can make it if we try. To the people of Trinidad and Tobago and the region, the UE is your university. We are a Caribbean asset, and we are focused purposefully on the needs of Caribbean society. In closing, I am forever grateful for the people in my life who have been the fuel in my sometimes sputtering engine through thick and thin over so many decades. At a time like this, I remember my angels who guard me from above, Anne Carnegie, my late brother Tom, and my own parents, Bernadine and Jean Marie. I remember two of my mentors and cheerleaders who cherish, fuel, and uplift me. Too many to mention all. My husband is a loving rock and fountain of wisdom. My sister Therese and her entire Dominican convent pray for me every day, and I know I'll need even more prayers. <laughs> a wonderful family, great friends, some flew in from across the region. Thank you for making the trip, especially with these airplane prices. I am thankful for the goodwill and support of so many colleagues and staff demonstrated by the many messages and the cooperation received. And thank you for the lovely procession as well. Every, more, every day more and more coming forward to volunteer as we create the change. I am grateful for the faith placed in me to lead this campus. I will continue to work to keep and build that trust. Thank you, Chancellor, Vice Chancellor, management teams, planning committee, marketing, registrars, teams, DFM, security, procession colleagues, all of you here today for, this, for your support and this wonderful, uplifting ceremony. I am not one for grandiose terms like legacy. When I leave this place, it will be enough for me to have you say, she was useful and got things done. <laughs> Thank you, Chancellor, Vice-Chancellor, and Professor Antoine. Congratulations, Principal Antoine. We are honored to certainly have witnessed your formal induction. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, after hearing Principal Antoine's in induction speech, I know that, like me, you are convinced that together we can indeed create the change. I trust that we may all take up the challenge to be change agents in our own spaces. To close our proceedings, I invite Keon Delas and Daniel Ryan on stage. Keon on the National Instrument is an instructor in music at the Department of Creative and Festival Arts and is also a graduate of the Faculty of Law. Daniel on saxophone is a graduate of the Department of Creative and Festival Arts and together they will perform Year for Love by local soca artist voice, Kieran and Daniel.
Uh, Kieran and Daniel, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you too, ladies and gentlemen. You have been an awesome audience. We have come to the end of the induction ceremony at which Professor Rosemary Bell Antoine has been presented her instruments and officially released to lead a new era here at the St. Augustine campus. Professor Antoine, once again, my congratulations. As with occasions of this magnitude, a tremendous amount of planning among a dedicated network of persons was necessary to make it a reality. This evening's success meant countless hands worked for months in the front lines and also in the background. Allow me to take a moment to say a heartfelt thank you to all. And as we prepare to close, allow me to note a few things. We will invite the media to leave now and prepare for the academic procession, which will be escorted to the reception by drummers from the Malik, Malik Performing Arts Group, and they'll be met on arrival by TASA. I invite you all also to visit the exhibition on campus principal Professor Bel Antoine's work, and please do sign the guest book at the University Inn and Conference Center. Ladies and gentlemen, friends, family, and well-wishers, those here at the Dagger Auditorium and those joining via the live stream, thank you for being a part of these proceedings. I wish you all an enjoyable evening ahead. And Chancellor, it is with great pleasure that I now call on you to officially declare the ceremony closed. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being here. I now have the pleasure of officially declaring the ceremony closed. Uh, would you allow the platform party and the academic procession to please leave? Um, and if you could be upstanding. Thank you. We have come to the end of our live stream of the induction ceremony of the Pro Vice Chancellor and Principal of the St. Augustine campus, Professor Rosemary Bell Antoine. On behalf of Chancellor, Vice Chancellor, other administration, and staff of the University of the West Indies, particularly those here at the St. Augustine campus, thank you for tuning in to celebrate with us. We do hope you enjoyed being part of this formal academic ceremony. Our website will go live in the coming days. Here, we will post event photos, videos, and speeches from this evening's ceremony at sca.ue.edu forward slash induction. Thank you again, and remember, together we can create the change.